I recently decided um, to take a break from Facebook because I hate it and it's Fair. bad. It's bad for my mental health. Fine. Um, but I did the thing where I forgot to turn off the notifications on uh, my phone. So I still I'm still getting notifications from Facebook. And I was notified this morning that um, it is one Skylar Henry's birthday. Today. Oh, <laughs> Oh, happy birthday. You, you guys Skyler. remember. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Skylar's birthday. It's Skylar's birthday. Oh, How does wow. it feel? So great. Really great. <laughs> That's the same answer to that's the exact same tone and the levels with when I ask how my levels are when we're about to record. Um so are you ready now finally to join the sunrise movement yes oh in another couple of years i'll be old enough and i'm really I'm looking the forward to it. no the sunrise movement thank you uh, i yeah. wonder if they know how badly they've just affected us <laughs> in Into it. i mean they come up in like I every did. episode i know like oh we're too old for you. oh okay. I, yeah, okay I i called last summer like my auntie summer i was just like out here like when i when i was running into like younger people but like, you get you need anything baby you you need some food you need some water like i really have embraced being an auntie and i like it <laughs> sure skylar do you finally today feel like an auntie yes uh, i had that moment today <laughs> Good. Um, woke up, felt like an auntie. Yeah, I woke up and I was like, something's different and I can't yep. put my finger on it. That's this, what it is. That's I exactly what it is. take care of the youths in my life and take, not take have to deal youths. with the consequences take of care spoiling of the them. Give, put a little five in their hands and make sure they you know, have some pocket change. Yeah, wink at take them good care. and be like, go get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay, all right. Well, you I go got a plan now for the rest of the year and... Uh, and going into 2021 then. But be like the cool auntie or uncle. Like don't be the like luxury one. Be the one who like always has the condoms and the lube. You know what I mean? Like do it Have right. You met him? Of course you will. Yeah, just do it right. That's all I'm saying. It's like <laughs> yeah. don't be the don't be like Uncle Denzel, which is like wearing a tracksuit and like, how your mama doing? Like, no, don't be that. <laughs> like, be the cool one. Uh, how like, your mama doing? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> how old your sister? Hang on, real quick. Talk like exactly. that. Hey, uh, get rid of that tracksuit. <laughs> yeah, no, the tracksuit's out. <laughs> All right. Kitty's like, he's on telling it. Kitty and Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you do today, Skylar? Like, did you do anything special to celebrate? Or do you have any plans? Uh, a giant, giant party. Not really. No, it's it's kind of not an an exciting birthday, but that's okay. Um, I had, I watched a fun debate. Uh, I did. Yeah. I had a, a friend of mine came by for a white claw on the porch earlier, and then. Aww. Uh, I think I think I'm looking forward to some socially distanced porch drinks after we record tonight. So cool. Yeah, uh, I wanted to join you for the debates, but I'm technically in quarantine right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, a friend of mine got me a uh, Pennywise the Clown Chia Pet. Uh, mm -mm. Yeah. So <laughs> I and I've never done a Chia Pet before, and I did it today. So we're gonna mm -mm. see how it goes. Mm -mm. You'll love it, Flo. To see it. Can't wait. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> no, no clowns. No clowns. Even with the nice oh, no like clowns. chia hair. Mm -mm. No clowns. No clowns. It's just clowns. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, They're scary. Like, you had a clown thing. They're scary in general. I mean, like I don't. Fine. It's not like like. I'm not one of those people who will like cry if they're around or like lose it, but I really just, I find them creepy. And I did I mean, it when I was a kid, but as an adult, I find them really creepy. I just have you seen the have a reboot? full body reaction. I did, so. I saw parts of the reboot. I saw the original. No, thank you. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's how I talk, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like Dave talking about getting into a body of cold water. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. no, no, thanks. No, 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 no,
like inconsequential decisions that we make. It's true. Which true. will later yeah. be used for roasting during a voices opener. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we should probably get to the show, but we but formally happy birthday, Skylar. Happy, happy birthday, Skylar. birthday, Skylar. I got wear my voices, everything Cheers. for you. I love it. Happy to be celebrating it with you guys. That wasn't sarcasm, by the way. Voices, <laughs> like, the things they said, voices, I'm from those days. All the voices heard. Voices, the things we say, voices, they're in your head. All the voices heard. Why, hello. Welcome to episode 101. <laughs> Of Voices River City. What's so funny, you guys? Because <laughs> normally you have a so thing we're, you say. It's like, we're just gonna well, be... hello, everybody. You have Kempa, you know, and then we do our thing. And you were like, hello. You were like, okay. you know what? I really like what Skylar just did back there with the birthday right. thanks. So I'm going to keep that up for the, for the hello. <laughs> All right. Well, fine. You have Kempa. <laughs> and Skylar. <laughs> and Shannon. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard. I tried. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're all feeling some some things. We're here. No, I feel it. I it's how else can you feel when it's one of your best friend's birthday? So let's let's pew, just pew, pew, ride pew. this wave, you know. Fred. Um, <laughs> so we're all gathered here tonight uh, because there was the final debate of the worst election year of the modern era uh, between Joe Biden and president, my president, Donald Trump. (laughs) Uh, Which uh, it, it'll be interesting for you to know is it over as of less than an hour ago when we're recording this. So we're still trying to put our brains back together uh, as we record this. So I, thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. Yeah. We'll see and how we this might, goes. You can just assume we weren't watching it with empty hands as well. So <laughs> let's let's see how this episode goes. Um, I was. I am not allowed to drink alcohol right now. So. Okay. Shannon, you will be our shining pillar this episode. Uh, oh, I don't know about that. will guide us through <laughs> these, these very hairy, sometimes you know they feel like innavigable subjects but we're going to use shannon uh to to really be our 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 lighthouse i'll just make sure that as i see that you're it seems like your your vessels are getting lighter that you make sure to grab another okay all right if one of my eyes starts to like float to the side let me know like penny all right yeah got precisely like pennywise (laughs) the clown (laughs) (laughs) on it so what do we think of the debate? Who uh, Trump twenty twenty? I assume. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I mean, that's duh. a popular take around here. I'm Honestly, like I think it's like if Ow. if you want my like honest opinion, I think it's probably debate wise, like just functionally the best one that we've seen this season. Um, yes, yes, I think the threat agree. of muting them yeah, made a big worked. difference. It, it didn't seem as if they actually ever did it, but just the idea that they could. And it did kind of unravel at the end, but at least like the first half of it was yeah. like, it, honestly, they were way, way, way better about not talking over each other, right. which I, don't, I, you know, I don't know if that on like, it, I don't know if it improves the quality of the debate to me or not, because at this point, like, I have already voted. Most of the people I know have already voted. So this is just spectacle for me. This Who is on the like show has voted already. Me. Flo, you haven't voted yet. <laughs> flows, flows on the fence could go either way this, deb- the woman this debate who was for wrote flow. the fucking sax sister circle <laughs> voter guy I say this all the time that like I usually say to Tareen please somebody please remind me to vote because it'll be irony of all irony <laughs> if I actually forget to vote doing all of this stuff like I've done so many voter guide sessions and everything and I, I'm no well part of it is that I know I mean I don't want to cost campaigns money but also I want to see what they're sending so as soon as I send my ballot in I know that 
PDI will be updated in about 24 hours and then I'll stop getting the mailers and stuff. I like how so, for you, like, that's a bummer. Yeah, right. I, was, I was like, why I went and did it ASAP. Save the trees, Topher. What the hell? I know man? I want to save the trees, but I also am really interested in like what messages are out there and trees. Did you really, phone I mean, a friend for that? <laughs> I mean, I probably could. It's just I, I don't know. So you know, I used to always get my ballot by mail and then drop it off on election day. Um, but this year I am going to turn it in early. I just haven't done that yet. Okay. Okay. It's Skyler. this is this is a safe space and I really just want to for a minute acknowledge that you just trusted us with the big truth. Yeah. I mean, um, I filled out my ballot. No, Flo and I have <laughs> had this conversation every single election. We do this every election. Yes. I, I also like like I'm included in those people under 40 right now where they're like only 12,000 of you have voted. And I'm like, ha, 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 we're coming, right? Like <laughs> I, I kind of like it. Like they always count us out and then, you know, at least a good number of us do show up. I'm like, I'm like, I come off as like this sort of recalcitrant jerk on this show, I assume. But like literally when I get my ballot, I'm so excited and I fill it out and I like can't wait to like tromp down and like hand it to somebody and so it's okay. usually out of my hands very fast yeah you're you you come across as the person who would do that do i i i'm yeah you i'm really yes. optimistic about mine i i went to a gun range in orange county and they had a box that said official ballot box <laughs> <laughs> and you just tossed it right there. in there yeah yeah you did drove all the way down there so <laughs> yeah, first yeah. of all you're supposed to drop your ballot off in a box in your own I county. found it in the creek the other day. <laughs> Awkward. Awkward turtle. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> awkward turtle? You never did awkward turtle? No, I have I've never. I'm learning so much tonight. <laughs> I actually only fill, filled my ballot out like a day ago. Like, I think it was, it might have been, yeah, I think I did it yesterday. Um, but do you know, wish like, that you would have waited for the debate tonight to really make yeah. a decision. Definitely changed my mind. I yeah. I, yeah. I really wanted to, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. who are we all voting for now? Um, Ralph Nader, is that one of the mm -hmm. options? Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a good one. I like that. My, yeah. good Honestly, thought. if you write in Ralph Nader and then Biden loses, it'll be the most <laughs> rock and roll thing. <laughs> that like, has ever happened <laughs> well that's a funny thing to me it's like you guys view me as this like nerd that can't wait to get his ballot in but i voted for gloria lariva so i like i don't necessarily fit the like i can't wait to vote mold yeah no but you are a self-reported like uh like office of elections or whatever count you know whatever the fuck that place is oh me emailing them and sh i do do that okay. yeah you talk about how you call them and they basically pick up the phone and they're like hey kempa what's up like what's your what's your question now like you know it's it doesn't change your street cred yo you're okay. still it's all right yeah I, I don't, and i don't think that that means how you're gonna vote just because you're enthusiastic to vote Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Um, but I'm just like, third party people are not generally A, public facing, or B, uh, well, I guess A, public facing. Like, they, it's not just somebody that's, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Like, it doesn't I mean, matter in California. Biden wins California because our electoral system is bullshit. We'll get into that in a minute. Can yeah. we can we start talking about the yeah. debate tonight? Please, let's talk about it. Okay. Um, Donald Trump said that he was the least racist person in the room. Mm. No one could prove him wrong. What are our thoughts on He that? also then said that the audience was so dark that he couldn't see them. Okay, <laughs> let's, okay. <laughs> so with those two thoughts in mind, Dr. Kofer and <laughs> Shannon, what are our responses here? <laughs> Utter confusion, um, <laughs> because all he has done is um, give a platform to white supremacy, and you know, and 
I, I mean, and I, I think it's really true that he doesn't just dog whistle it. He's just out overt about it. Right. And then I think a lot of the policies he, that he has championed in the you. executive orders, <clears throat> excuse me, that he has, um, has, you know, signed have institutionalized it. So it, it's confusing to me. I, I get the things that he says that he has done well. I even get when he, you know, finds correct criticism of Joe Biden, but to then label himself as the like the champion of, you know, racial justice is just laughable. I didn't want like a real response, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> just, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I think it's upside down in, world. <laughs> I think that my response to Donald Trump being the the what is it the least racist, the person, least racist in, person in the room, in the room is room. just like and the room was too what was it, Skyler? <laughs> too dark. The audience was too the dark. Was so dark. <laughs> I mean, the he audience was see too them. dark that he could. And he, I mean, straight, he straight up like squinted and was like, I don't, I don't know. I can't see him. They're too dark. I can't like, see color. I can't see a goddamn thing. As, as, as a dark person, I just want to say like, that's a thing. And so I'm not sure if Donald Trump is so racist that he's come full circle and he's now woke because <laughs> I definitely do say to people when we're taking pictures, especially when I'm with other black people who are like clearly standing in front of the sun and the sun's behind us. And I'm like, how long have you been black? Because I don't think you understand how this works. How we have long to be have you facing been black? This, Yeah, because we have to be facing the sun. Otherwise the shadows are there and you can't see us in the photo. And it's like, it's a very clear thing that you have to know like lighting matters so i'm not sure if he's so racist that he actually stumbled upon an often unknown truth that it, lighting matters there it sounds like there's a horseshoe theory <laughs> on racism no there's not, there's not. i mean am, am I, my my <laughs> it, it's fucking it's obvious fucking bullshit that this guy is the least racist person in the room unless he's and in the room by we, himself because because it's just... and then yeah. he's also the most racist like, person in the world and <laughs> Stephen it's, miller like moments case, later it's schrodinger is racist yeah moments later he goes on to do the whole like me the, the bad mexicans who are criminals crossing the border thing so it's like you can't cut dude like <laughs> my it, donnie my favorite something. part when they like start talking about when these two especially start like talking about race issues is that every time Donald Trump is like, well, let's talk about 1994 when you authored every the crime time, bill yeah. and called people super predators and whatnot. And I think that's like, I th I love it. I like, it's, it's like schadenfreude for me because that is like a legitimate fucking criticism of Joe Biden that like actually works. And well, that's he, why you don't run- He technically use the term super predator. He did say predator, but he never used the term- Okay, super that's predator, more so of a that's Hillary Clinton-ism, yeah. yeah, yeah. okay. But and like I would either actually way, say he owned it. This, I mean, like that—that that was the one thing I actually gave a point to Joe Biden for, for just saying like, yeah, we all got together and like, especially in the '80s, we voted for some of these drug bills that, and he was like, and we were wrong, and we need to fix that. And so I'm like, okay, I did think though it was true when Donald Trump said you were in power for eight years, why didn't you do something about it then? And I think right. the, the correct criticism of the Democratic Party is because we're so afraid of our own shadow that even when we're in power, we're afraid of the next election. And so we don't do anything when we're in power. So yes. the moment they got in power, they were like, oh shoot, instead of let's get as much done as we can while we have a majority in every house and the president, we're, we're going to be like, oh my gosh, what about the next election? So we're going to moderate a bunch of our positions. And it's just like, 100%. yeah, the Republicans said they were going to stop you, but they don't have the numbers right now to stop you. So y'all should have like bossed up and done what you needed to do. Do what and the Republicans lost, they do. Have to und exactly. Like, I was Fucking like- Fucking salt the earth. Like, just like, like if you have the power do it, go for it. Yeah. Cause I like, I guarantee you what's coming, right? It, assuming that Biden wins is that we go from the moderates looking at the left and being like, look, let's get him in. And then we'll push him to the left and we'll, we'll influence them to go to the left. It is going to turn into, look, the midterms are right around the corner and this is not the time to be, to be critical of the president. We're not like, we're, we're never going to like be in the, the position. The midterms are always around the corner. The that's, moderate, the moderate Democrats are never going to be like, 
it's go time. Let's fucking yeah. go Medicare for all. Let's let's do it. It's never going to happen. Like well, it's that's never it's never going to be that you're describing right, right there. And it's uh, always going to be the wrong time to like actually reach for things that we want. This is why it's important to have our AOCs out there to primary the fucking idiot Democrats uh, so they can stay there and be the people that keep their feet to the fire. Does she have power as far as like old school, um, you know, hierarchical party politics goes? No, but she is probably the most powerful Democrat in the country because of her social capital, because of her social media following. And we can fucking punch these idiots left and right every day as soon as they get into office, hopefully, uh, inshallah, like come November. But like, yeah, totally. Yeah. What were we talking about? Biden? <laughs> Donald Trump isn't I mean, you were, you were talking about race and I was just like, I think the, the question that really made me go again, like I did this in the first in the first debate and I did it again tonight, like, oh, right. These are two 70 year old, 70 plus white guys talking about oh my race. God. Right. Because right. When, oh. they, when they asked the question about the talk and they were like, listen, you oh. know, parents of color have to give the talk to their kids, especially black parents. Um, but generally, if you have a brown child, you have to give the talk to your kids. Um, and so what does that look I mean, like? What would you say to the parents who have to do this thing that you know you don't have to do? Joe Biden started out fine saying, you know, no matter your income, you know, parents have to do this and we have institutional racism. And then somehow or another it turned into, and that's why we need to create more jobs. And I was like, time out. <laughs> so he well, he here. also- you, Like what's happening? He also, even before that, he started by saying like, the moderator asked like, do you understand sort of like the, the seriousness of this um, or the, you know, like what's going on with families um, of color when they have to have the talk and he was like yep I totally understand my daughter's a social worker she's done a lot of writing on this it's like are you fucking kidding me like you're yeah. running for president of the United States and you're the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you're asked about race in America is I know a lot of things because my daughter's a social worker I do think that something like that is like I'm just like you, you know, my daughter oh, does yeah. things that somebody that you know does. Right. Yeah. I think that's what he was going for. Which did not work as well for, so Tareen loves the part where Joe Biden says, it's not about me or you, it's about you, America. It's yeah, when he family. looks in the camera. Your kid. Yeah, and he like talks to the, and he talks about, you know, you're, we know you're struggling, you know you're trying to decide if you're going to send your kids back to college, how are you going to make that mortgage payment? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I just think it's so funny that Tareen finds that so compelling because he's like, that's right, Joe, talk to the camera. But today he did it and Donald was like, See, he's a politician. All this, we're going to talk to you, America. He's like, I'm not a politician. That's how I got elected. And I definitely chuckled. Donald Trump is nothing if not sometimes entertaining when, while he's also being horrifying because totally. I definitely laughed out loud at that. I was like, I, I think Trump a little bit removed that veneer, but I still think it's effective. I feel, I still yeah. think that it Biden is. should do it. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's totally effective. It's absurd and it is planned and it is definitely all of those things. But uh, last time we watched the it, Skyler heard me screaming in his living room, like, "Look at the camera! Ask people if you're better off than you were four years ago," because like that's that that's like. I don't know. It's like a central meat and potatoes thing that he should be doing every single day that he's on this trail because none yeah. of us feel better than we were four years ago. Right. Yeah, I agree. And and I, I think to that point, you know, Joe Biden did drive home the point about like, he was like, the stock market is up. And he was like, most people's lived experience does not rise and fall with the stock market. Nice to hear one of those guys acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. That actually was kind of nice. It's also, nice. I thought like Biden, uh, he had a great line tonight that I was like, all right, man, like respect, you know, like I'm not his biggest fan, but uh, he had that line where Trump was saying something about, oh, red states do this and blue states do that. And Biden was like, look, man, I'm not even interested in red states and blue states. I'm into the United States. All oh, right. States. And I was like, all, all the right, states. Joe. That was also right. an Obama oh. quote because that was yeah, yeah, from yeah. his 2004 yeah, yeah. Skyler, what did Democratic... I text you? Yeah. 
What did I tell you when I said that? Yeah, yeah. That was an Obama quote. Yeah. That was an Obama quote. <laughs> um, how's everybody feeling about um, this whole prepaying your taxes thing? Sounds legit. I'm sold. I think yeah. the the case is closed on Trump's taxes. Uh, I believe it. <laughs> he prepaid millions, right? Tens millions. of millions. Yeah. Many, and, many, and, many, and, many, many, many millions. And then he also paid people millions of dollars to be able to sort this whole thing out. And the IRS is attacking him. And the $750 was like a processing fee that you Correct. Pay, okay. prepay millions gotcha. of dollars in taxes. Gotcha. Listen, if the you, IRS is being treated, very unfair. And right. he's very unfairly. Very unfairly. Mm -hmm. More yeah. unfairly than than really anyone uh, yeah. as far as uh, his it, taxes go with the IRS. And I think I think it's time for us to start asking why is the IRS going so hard against Donald Trump? Yeah, it, especially because he prepaid all his taxes. Right. Like this is a guy who looked down the road and was like, "I'm going to be super successful." And just before before I even make the money, I want to give back to the country that Millions. has helped me he's, to make all like, of this what, money. What's today, 1992. I want to pay all my taxes forever now. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know also how long, how much money I'm going to make and how long I'm going to live. Mm -hmm. Also, I That's know it usually takes four. Movie. Does it usually take four years to process a tax? Because we're still waiting on his like tax returns from before he ran. Well, no, right? he well, says that as soon he, as his accountant says he can do it, he'll show. But it's him been to five us. years now. Like well, he's still well, they're working That's on it. They're just there, they're well. still working on it. I'm just, I, I'm just. He it's called like, up his guy and his guy, he, he was like, when am I going to get the, the taxes? They want the taxes. I want to give them the taxes. And the guy's like, like listen, I'm trying to give you my taxes. It's done. hard. It's hard to give you my taxes. And his I'm guy just, was like, listen, I talked okay. to a lot of the best people and these are the finest, most correct mm -hmm. taxes I've ever seen. I'm trying just, to give you my taxes. I got mm -hmm. my best people on my taxes. I right. can't give you my taxes yet because it's it's hard. There's a lot going on. There's lawyers everywhere. There's, you know, there's a lot what, happening. Wait, what accent are you doing right now? Because that like sort of was Trump and drifted into like a different thing there. Did I get it a little through. off? All right. You uh, went a little it off was course. like Trump and Ira. <laughs> he, he promised us he was going to build a wall in like record time, but it takes five years to get one tax return back. I'm just, I'm just really confused. But, but he, but he prepaid I mean, him, confused. so that complicates. I just like saying I'm confused when there's something that's very obvious that's just, not that confusing and it's pretty straightforward. I know, I know. Sometimes you do that, and I like take you seriously, and <laughs> we need to work on this. Okay. Yeah, no, oh, I, I'm confused. Like that, is just my go-to. This is like for, that one time really? you thought that Auburn mayor was a Klansman. <laughs> a little different than that. But. <laughs> Because I'm zoned in this time. Last time, I literally was like out to fucking lunch on, uh -huh, that, uh -huh. on that mayor. You could have told yeah. me anything, and it would have been like, wow, what a terrible mayor. Who's that old mayor? Happens. I mean, <laughs> I think in terms of as far as the taxes are concerned, um, I'm really excited to know that there is the option to prepay a lifetime of taxes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look into it for myself um and just get is there that, a discount get that ball roll well apparently it only costs 750 dollars okay so okay that's great that's i mean it's gonna less than yeah, I pay now. i'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, moving around of funds to make that happen but but I'm my really favorite is that it. it's these guys who are having the conversation about whether or not fifteen dollars an hour is too much to pay people as a these minimum guys. wage these guys um which to my knowledge was like that might have been able to cover basic living expenses 20 years ago uh no longer really the case uh extremely fun to listen to joe biden talk about how he wants to bring it up like it's some progressive fucking platform uh yeah love it love it uh wonderful. what did we think about the the um minimum wage conversation the minimum wage conversation is is to me and has always been ridiculous. Minimum federal minimum wage right now is the same as it's been for, I mean, isn't it? It's something like twenty years, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think it's seven twenty five, uh, which it has been for a really, 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 really long time. Like everybody's living expenses have like quadrupled. Um, I th I think I think the fact that 
like the quote unquote progressive on the ticket is touting a $15 minimum wage is fucking criminal. Like, I don't give a fuck what, like, what the economic situation is like in Alabama versus what it's like in, you know, the Upper West Side, New York or whatever. Like, a living wage is a fucking living wage. And the fact that, like, we're trying to treat it like it's $15 an hour was then and is now an insult. Like, it, like, it, it, yeah. Joe Biden needs to be arguing for like a twenty-five or thirty-dollar minimum wage if he wants right. to get me excited about that shit. Yeah, I did enjoy when Trump said, "I would consider a fifteen-dollar minimum wage to an extent." Like, when well, he, got he was, I don't know what that means. He was also he then directly he never means anything he says. Like that's the central part of it. He's just he, like, I don't should I say this? Okay, I feel like I should say this, and so he says it. His there was a follow up question that was like would you consider a federal uh uh yeah a federal minimum wage and he was like yeah to to an extent but i think it really should be up to the states and it's like okay so okay so i don't think you understood the question uh senior president we're asking whether or not you want you want to have a federal minimum wage that applies yeah. So well, you're asking, yeah, but no. you're asking a man who would be fine to just like reinstitute slavery as it existed Correct. hundreds of years ago, right. if right. he could. Correct. So, he, like, he d- clearly he doesn't, doesn't care right. about the Correct. issue. I mean, Correct. and his I just like, like the answer ob- is like, if if we did Im- impose a fifteen dollar minimum wage in like I don't know a Louisiana, it's like then a minimum minimum wage worker could afford a home. And it's like, oh no, I guess we don't want that. You know? You know what one of my favorite things, yeah. You know, one of my favorite things about the minimum wage conversation is, is that like in America, you always hear like, if you are poor and you're struggling, it's always like, oh, but you have an iPhone or like, why don't like you you have Netflix. Why don't you find a better job? Like there's jobs around. Why don't you acquire some skills and get a better job? We never have the conversation where it's like, oh, you run a business but can't play your employees enough to live in the city that you operate out of. Why don't you start a better fucking business? Like that, like you never, you never hear it framed like that. It's always, the onus is always on the worker, the worker yeah. to like pull themselves up by their bootstraps, which Correct. or whatever, which by the way, is a, is a, a saying that we had colloquialism it, it means something impossible. You you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but yeah. like the libertarians didn't get the memo on that. Um, either way, the onus is always on the worker to do better and never, ever, ever on the business to do better. And it, it like in a, in a time where like everybody's out of work, but like, I, like how much wealth have has the top, you know, 1% or whatever amassed since COVID started. I mean, it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars, mm-hmm. right? Um, it is. It's not like I, th- that conversation is not happening correctly I- as far as I can see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 is there much more to say about this debate? It, it, to me, it was like, you know, obviously, as far as us leftists go, it's, it's Biden saying that like, I'm not a socialist. I beat the socialists. Dude, if he doesn't stop talking about how he beat the socialists, yeah. well, at the same time, like trying to reach out and be like, well, let's bring the left along. Stop fucking talking about us like we're the opposition then, you dumb fucking idiot. Well, like, what, like, what are you talking me? about? It's like, go ahead and say you beat us, fine. But like, don't reach out to us. Just stop. Right. Yeah. Stop reaching out to us. Reach out yeah. for the middle. Like You're it's running fine. against it's Joe. <laughs> like it's totally fine if you don't want us. And we're fine. Like we knew you didn't want us from the first place, but it's funny to have him being like, I beat the socialists. Yeah, socialist. exactly. Can, well, can especially for me, it's like, cause no, the man, argument you said, don't the argument all the way through the primaries was like, no, we can't do the stuff that leftists want because it won't be popular with middle American or with like with moderate voters. Yeah. So, so then we get Joe Biden. It's like, okay, cool. So we're not doing leftist stuff. So I'm not interested And in right. fucking the libs. So, all of a sudden are like, wait, what you have to so vote for Joe. It's like, do. no, 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 go get the moderates. You guys wanted like, the moderates go get the fucking moderates. Can I add a little asterisk to that too? Cause what libs say is like, oh, you fuck you. You know, you can't just take your ball and go home. No, fuck you. You think we stopped working after this? 
you think there was like not 10 things that we didn't work for after our guy lost that we're not right. working for today, like rent control, like fighting against a strong mayor. Like we're, we're working every day on this shit. So go fuck yourself. Like we, like you, they, they have no idea who he is talking to when he's talking about this shit. So well, like, the- if he wants us, go ahead and talk about some, you know, Medicare for all. If he wants us, go ahead and talk about, I don't know, a Green New Deal. But if you don't, no, man, go keep doing what you're doing. But you've obviously told us that we can keep fighting for what we want to fight for here locally and here at the state level. And that's what we're going to do. I mean, not only does will he not get behind something like Medicare for All or a Green New Deal, but him and Kamala Harris now have come on stage on debates. He just said publicly tonight, I love private insurance. I think private insurance is great. You know, like, I mean, what do you, what is the message that you're enough. delivering to leftists there? Kamala Harris walked on the stage at the last one and was like, fracking? No, we're not going to ban fracking. I love fracking. I think Joe repeated that tonight, right? Joe's frack on, frack Joe's on, goes on stage and, and lets Donald Trump bully him into a corner where he's like, no, defund the police. I want to give more funding to the police. I think the police right. deserve more money. It's right. like, dude, you keep getting these guys in and, and they get fucking bullied into like right. into denouncing the platforms that are like popular amongst the voters and right. then you wonder why people don't fucking turn out to vote you know i like i don't know i it, it's infuriating to me because it feels really fucking obvious also because i'm positive positive without a doubt that these guys if if and i think i i say this th- i think that biden is going to win this thing uh, on the third if if nothing major happens in between then and now. It'd be surprising. Um, if it would be surprising if he didn't. But like the Democrats ran this exact same play four years ago and got fucking dunked on for it. We have the conversation again this time around with the left being like, "Hey, let's run a different play this time." Because the last time it didn't work out. The Democrats being like. No, we're going to run the exact same play and do everything in the exact same way and lose the exact same voters for the exact same reasons. Now, if Biden loses, who the fuck's fault do you think it's going to be on Twitter? Right. It's going to be going to be the left. It's going to be the left that fucked it up again. I will say it is a different game this time around. Uh, Biden is a more popular candidate as as far as likability goes. And that's just like what the polls say. Um, And yes, uh, sexism is probably a part of that. Um, But Biden also goes to Wisconsin. He also goes to the fucking states that need to see him to vote for him. They did learn that lesson for sure. Yeah. And like, they, I don't know. It, it, I'd be astounded if they, if they lost, I will not be astounded if they blame us again, but it's super right. funny to me. For me, it's always like white Gen X libs that are like in the arts in Sacramento that are the maddest at me. Well, and you're you're always in, if you're a leftist, you're in between a rock and a hard place all the time, right? Because if Biden yeah. if Biden loses, then it's fuck you left. Why didn't you guys get on board? And like, why you guys have to take your ball and go home and now we all get Trump again. So thanks a lot, leftists. If Biden wins, then it's like, see, the left is irrelevant and we don't need them and we don't need to entertain any of these platforms. So like, no matter what, the libs will find a way to like right. marginalize the left every time, regardless of the outcome. Yeah, Uh-oh. and I think the sorry, I think um as I was watching the debate, aside from just having to collect my jaw from the floor repeatedly, um it's just this like constant like I I feel like I'm watching like two one like hella conservative dude and then one like pretty conservative dude go at each other and just like silence an entire voting block of people who have been fighting for so much for so long right and we've said that you know Kempo was just talking about it Skylar's talking about it it's an entire generation of people 
who have been really going hard for 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 so much and making sure that their voices are heard and they're still they're just able to like silence and erase that all of that work and all of that dedication and like and we know that all of those things because because of the dedication and because of the passion that goes into those fights they are forward thinking um they're they're well thought out they're intentional and so you can talk to most any leftist who is dedicated and they can do like a drunk history of policy initiatives that still sound better than what we heard tonight and i think that it's i just this entire time that i'm watching is just like we're we're just like silencing so much for these guys like yeah. and it's it's just again it's just like incre- it's just disappointing it's i would you know what? Maybe I would rather see a presidential debate with these two assholes while they're both drunk. Now that I just that could drunk be history. Um, I don't think Trump drinks. No, he's a- I don't I think that I, I don't mean, think he should drink given that he doesn't sound sober a lot of the times when he speaks. I mean, he also doesn't experience joy or have any friends. He doesn't exercise because it, oh. you have a finite amount of energy and if you use it up, you run out. I'm gonna have some really dumb pushback here. He comes from a family with heavy drinkers and so it makes sense to me. So, oh. okay. yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. it totally makes sense to me. I'm just saying like, I also don't know that we would get, I don't think that there that there's something he's holding back. Like normally when people say, <laughs> I would love to <laughs> hear you true. drunk, it's like because you I want to hear what you really think. Serum. I want right, to hear what you right. really think. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think that that's going to be the case. I think most of what he says already sounds incoherent. It sounds like the ramblings of somebody who is intoxicated. And so I don't think that you would get anything that felt coherent or useful or something different than what you're getting sober. So I'm mm-hmm. not at all advocating for people who have a history of alcoholism in their family to take up drinking. I'm just saying, yes, I no. don't think in their case, it would, I don't think in his case, it would, it would yield the, the results that normally people normally think of when they're talking about that. I do believe the Adderall thing. <laughs> uh, so what is the Adderall thing? I don't know oh, that he does a lot of Adderall. Hmm. Have you not heard this? No. Mm-mm. I'm not on my. Uh, I'm not Skyler, up on my Trump. This? I don't. I. I. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I thought he was a cocaine man. No. Like his sons clearly cocaine. are. He's Dude, Don. Not. Don Jr. has been visibly on cocaine like numerous times recently on television. As somebody who lived in South America for a year, I would agree with you on Don Jr. Trump. Yeah, maybe not so much. Uh but he definitely has an Adderall vibe. <laughs> like, what is oh an Adderall God. vibe? <laughs> oh God. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but like, what would he be like without the Adderall? I guess I'm trying to figure out like, what part Asleep. of that is just like 70 something white supremacist narcissist and what part of that is Adderall? I guess uh, I, I just need somebody well, to parse it out like for Like a me. white supremacist. Uh, it would be narcissist, but maybe 70% of what it looks like now, maybe. Um, still sounds horrible. Yeah. The, I don't, I don't, and so, so what might- ask me to do a lot here, trying to talk about Trump not on Adderall. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to understand. It's like, what, what would be the difference or what is the, what is the impact of Adderall? Maybe not for him, but in general, like I'm, I'm just not familiar with it as. Well, should we do an Adderall weekend and then talk about it on on a future podcast? Oh, Dude, you guys should do an Adderall. Fuck pod. that! I think you should do an Adderall pod. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Oh gosh. Don't. Oh my god. I have a story Come for on. You guys that I cannot tell right now. I, I, okay. Well, let's uh, let's move it along anyway, because we did have another thing that we wanted to talk about tonight. Yes. Um, Flow, I think this is kind of your department. Um, some new revelations have come to light regarding Measure A, correct? 
Yes, some new revelations have come to light regarding Measure A. Um, so there was always a question from the very beginning about one of the provisions of Measure A and Measure exactly A for Sacramento. What is, is for yes, I, yeah, yeah I, we, so. you were on the same page. Because um, <laughs> I know Dave is going to jump in there and be like, can we remind people what it is? So for those of you City of Sacramento voters, uh, Measure A is on the ballot and it is a revival of the strong mayor proposition that also um, has has some uh, toothless <laughs> equity proposals included in it, basically uh, more broken promises to come. And uh, it is on your Sacramento ballot for November 3rd. And so one of the additions or revisions that happened after it was introduced on July, I think it was like 27th or 28th, um, was the addition of term limits for the strong mayor to two terms. And um, the promise that was made was that uh, this, because this is the current mayor, Daryl Steinberg's second term, that after 2024, he would be termed out. It turns out that um, the city attorneys looked it over and said, that's actually not true. Uh, it, it, because it doesn't say that specifically, it defaults to the state law, which says that any new provisions um, basically would your grandfather did. So he would get two more terms. So he would not be ineligible to run for mayor again um, until he had, he, he essentially had served four terms. Um, and so this is a new read. One that I would expect a 36 year attorney and former Senate pro tem to be aware of. And so it raises for me some questions about like, did you really miss it in right. the provision or, and, and we don't have evidence that they knew per se, but they've been going around town for the last you know two months telling everybody that this is the mayor's last term. He wrote term limits into himself, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that none of that is true. Um, so here we are. But yeah, if so... you actually <laughs> wrote term limits in, then you would, the fucking term limits would be there, you know? Like, so they would start with anybody else. Any well, new mayor would only right. have two terms, but he yeah. gets two more terms. And yeah, he would only get two more terms, but right. it would still be two terms in addition to what he's got now. And he, right. yeah, he's, he says that he's done right after mm -hmm. after this term, but of course, and, and but the 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 part that it like was not clear is that he he like in between now and then at any time he can change his mind and run again. Right. 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 Um, just like he, when he ran, he said he was not interested in reviving strong mayor, yet here we are. So I mean, like, it's very clear that he has a right to change his mind and at least on one other occasion has changed his mind in a really substantive way. So does that, for, for the people on this show, does that change anybody's mind about Measure A? No. Uh, oh, but I, I, but no I don't- harder. I, I don't Vote hear no many people harder. saying yes. Like honestly, <laughs> it does seem to be pretty unpopular. Like I feel I've like been, I'm in a bubble, but it does not seem like this is a popular. No, measure. I've like, been doing phone banking. I've been doing text banking. Um, I, you know, we've been in like obviously lawn sides don't win elections, but it's. I'm not hearing a whole lot of yeses. And it's really interesting to me that every major political party, except um, I think American Independent is in opposition of it. Right. We've never worked on anything where you can just phone bank basically anybody. Like right. you can get a list of Republicans, you can get a list, a list of Libertarians, you can get a list of Democrats. Like you can just get lists and call people and, and nobody is like, I'm voting yes on it. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm no, <laughs> click. Yeah, I'm no, click. Well, that's kind of the chickens coming home to roost for a neolib, right? I mean, this is a classic example of somebody who like tries to please everybody, is completely ineffective at everything because of it, and then winds up being wildly unpopular amongst like every demographic. Yeah, yeah. I think for I me, so. like, of course, it doesn't change anything for me. I'm still, I still voted no on a, and I, um, you know, if I had known. If I hadn't already voted, I would have really, really scribbled in that little dot real good. You would good. use black ink instead of blue? No, I just would have used more muscle. Okay. But would have written hell no next to the no. Fuck hell no don't invalidate measure. your ballots don't add any extraneous we're marks, not telling please. you to, okay i, I wrote it <laughs> uh, that one. but 
I do think there is this part of me that like when I saw this news come out, I was just like, yep, this guy, this fucking guy, you know, like it's just another example of shitty fucking leadership of like or dishonest leadership or both of those things together. Like just I don't this it's misleading. It's disappointing. It's not super surprising that he fucked up. Because yeah. that's kind of just what he does, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, does anybody, do we have any other insight on this one? I mean, my whole thought is like, it was a no already, right? I mean, it's. Right. Yeah. 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 I think my question is then for like, I want to talk to every person on the whose picture is on the yes on measure a mailer and just be like so how are you feeling about it now yeah dude start phone banking just those people they don't give a shit also but like i don't know i also okay i'm uh, maybe a little different from you three i don't think he runs again i don't think he runs again i think he hates his job yeah i, I don't oh, think he, yeah i, don't I think, think he, he i think he either. especially doesn't run again if he doesn't get strong mayor but i think, I think that's he the said as much even if he gets specifically it, he with hates strong his man. job i don't think he runs again yeah yeah, yeah, I think this is I think this isn't satisfying for him because I think he's always seen himself as this moderate bridge builder. Um and he's that's too just unpopular. Doesn't it yeah. doesn't serve him and, in this role. And that's the thing. If he runs again, like we will be here, all four of us and every fucking person out in the street that like makes us even worth listening to, you know? Like it's he will be fought every step of the way and he will hate every day of his life. And that's why we do what we do. Say yeah. that though. Yeah. Um, in other news are out of the county. Should we talk about that? Do we have time? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dave, well, this is Dave. This is one that you, yeah. you broke this, right? Yeah. Give oh. us the deets. Give us the tea. Mm. Well, um, I love the tea. So I love when Dave breaks stories. Yeah, it's my no, favorite I mean, thing. I, I broke it, but the thing about breaking a story is there's always like dozens of community activists that know about it beforehand, and they're like, "All right, who do we tell?" It's always nice when they handpick me. Uh, so, <laughs> so I always pick to to just like throw this one out into the ether. Uh, and it turned out that uh, the uh, chair of the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors, uh, Patrick Cerna, and Phil. sorry, Phil Cerna, Phil. yeah, <laughs> it was like Pat. <laughs> you, were, it, it's an amalgamation of the two who signed it. That's yeah. I knew where you were going. Phil Cerna, Patrick Cerna, and Phil Kennedy. No, <laughs> Phil Kennedy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> now I got it. Um, they they wrote a letter uh, asking for Nav Gill, who is the CEO of the County of Sacramento, uh, to step down. There's a few reasons for that. Flo, would you like to list off those reasons? Sure. Um, he pretty much, you know, completely flubbed the CARES Act allocations. And then most recently, he held an indoor meeting sans masks. One of the people in the meeting um, later tested positive for COVID. And so a bunch of people now have to quarantine. And this goes against county, um, the county health order. Uh, and he is supposed to be abiding by it because he is part of the county and <laughs> part of, you know, the leadership team that is enacting the, the health orders. So yeah. it's, it's, it's problematic. And a quick point on him flubbing uh, the CARES Act money. Uh, he should have put tens of millions of dollars towards our coronavirus response, but he ended up putting it into the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department's payroll. Uh, yes. And that's why effectively uh, we've had real problems getting tested here in our region. So. <laughs> 
he's also known to be a bully. Um, and so I, you know, and I, I don't think that, I think a lot of staff at the county um, have, you know, shared stories with the supervisors about just how much of a bully he is and just how much of a hostile work environment he creates. Um, and so I, I, I think, you know, those are the, the things that have kind of come to light. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this story unfolds moving forward. Because right. we need, because it's my understanding that, so, so far, Cerna and, yeah, so Cerna and Kennedy are, have their names on this thing, but they need, unless he voluntarily resigns, they need four of the Correct. five to, to they, kick him yes. off. And it's, it's my understanding that that's not like the most likely thing in the world to happen. It Why honestly depends. Happen? Why is this a rule? I, that blew Be my mind. Because, so what happened was, normally it's three, but if you don't set terms in the contract when they're set up, then the contract is indefinite and it takes four supervisors to fire the person. If they had just put some end dates in the contract to begin with, then it would only take three votes to be able to fire him. Oh, and for whatever God. reason, you know, there was contention on the board. So um, Natoli voted against it, Phil Cerna abstained, and Patrick Kennedy voted for this stupid contract um, that allowed him to basically be able to be in indefinitely without four votes. So the real question that comes Kennedy up- did, did that? Yes, Patrick yeah. Kennedy did. And so now he's signed on to the letter, which is irony of all ironies. This happened, I believe, in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so here we are now. Um, the question is, will Natoli get on board um, and will either um, the remaining Sue or the winner of the Rich Desmond, Greg Fishman race sign on and become the fourth one. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't know, you know, beyond what we've kind of talked about here and, you know, the little bit that I've read in, in, you know, uh, several of the voter guides, I don't really know much about Rich Desmond or Greg Fishman in the way to be able to signal what they might decide on this particular issue. Fishman. Fishman called for it. He did call for it publicly. So. Okay. I missed that. So, uh, so that and I, I don't know three. where Rich Desmond would fall on and this. And Donatoli is a little scarecrow, and I think he would vote in their direction if there were three people voting yes. So, well, especially given that he was against the contract in 2016. Yeah. I would hope so. No. This fucking county. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a mess. It's well, a mess. Yeah. So that I think this, I mean, this enough, should be man, this county. Oh my God. Yeah. Every what did I say? My my motto for Sacramento is Sacramento, where anything the city does badly, the county does worse. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> Well, we have an election coming up, so hopefully there'll be small incremental changes coming to that uh, equation soon. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! So thanks to Dave for breaking that story. That was a really fun Tuesday night, I think. I did break that. Marcos, I'm going to say it one more time. Unblock me, man. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, Marcos, it was a great story. I love you. Everybody was like send, texting around the image of the letter and being like, oh shit, did you see this? Oh my goodness. So. Yeah, so. Hell yeah. Dude, you were the first one to publish a story on this, but like, you know, two hours earlier, I shared this. <laughs> Follow me, Marcos. All right. Skyler? Well. Oh. Hang on. I don't have it. I'm gonna get there. Sorry. No, give me no. I'm I've never I... thrown it to you like this before. No, I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. He's gonna do it. I believe in you, Skyler. Thank you. Um, speaking of uh, believing in something and following that through to a successful uh, end. Uh, nope, that wasn't it. That was bad. <laughs> that was a bad one. I'll just get right to it. I'm on Twitter a lot, guys, uh, and I read a lot of takes as I go. I actually, I, I live tweeted like the first half of that debate and then I gave up. 
I um, loved your birthday wish tweet. Oh, thank you, thank you. Aww. It was a good. It was a good wish. <laughs> I'm sorry it didn't happen. On purpose. I cleaned yeah. my house and listened to it. So, I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, I've been on Twitter for so long that I've pretty much mined through all of the perfect takes. I feel like I've gone through all of the very good takes at this point, the excellent ones, even the just good ones. I'm kind of getting low on the mediocre takes now, and soon we'll have to start processing the lukewarm takes and then even the bad ones, and then we get into the really volcanic territory. Um, so I'm really hoping that there's some kind of lifeline that keeps me out of the volcano of bad takes uh, that I feel like I am slowly eating my way into. Um, I like, is there what I, what I, what I need, like I'm sliding into a volcano full of lava takes and I need somebody to throw me a rope, uh, that I can grab onto, uh, maybe that is attached to a helicopter that is filled with binders full of perfect takes that I can climb into the helicopter you see and then i will open up the binders and i'll read all of these perfect takes and that will be better than falling into a volcano dave uh take take it away please take it away (laughs) (laughs) i think it can help (laughs) um you know there was a time when takes weren't that hard (laughs) to find that were that perfect. Things have gotten weird, uh, but uh, I have a little cache of them. And my, that little cache I have is called voicesrivercity.com. Heard of this. Um, go there and find news and arts coverage from back in the day. Uh, we've been around for about three years. Uh, Truth of Power uh, commentary. I've got a buddy who just sent me a thing too. I got to read that uh, in the next day or so uh which we should be publishing um you know we we care a lot about truth of power work we did the sack follows the money project and you know that's all about um showing people kind of where money is coming from around the region um and then uh, of course like you know we have this current iteration the podcast where we talk about the things the takes that are good and bad in the world um you know this all comes down to sacramento and and california locally but we also talk about things on a national level and i think that we we land pretty well we land pretty good on on a lot of things anyway i'm gonna stop doing the trump voice uh (laughs) so uh we're also on uh youtube voices river city we are on instagram voices river city we are on Twitter Voices River City, Facebook Voices River City. And if you want to put some money down on us, patreon.com slash Voices River City. Um, I am on Twitter at you know Kempo at Y O U K N O W K E M P A. Uh, you can find me at Guillotine for you. That's Guillotine, the number four Y O U. I am Shan N. D. Stevens. And I am Flo Jean, F L O J A U N E. All right. Well, that's the show for today. Uh, thank you for it. listening. If you make if if you made it all the way through, as per usual, thank you so much for listening. Thanks to our Thanks supporters. You definitely made it all the way through. <laughs> you definitely made it all the way you through. You made for it. Sure. I'm sorry to made I'm sorry I made that sound like Every maybe it didn't happen. Yeah. Makes it all the way through. Because <laughs> you can't wait to hear how this ends. Right. Everyone makes it all the time. Exactly. So to everyone who still is here, because that's all of you, uh, we love you and we want you to stay safe. Stay sane. Stay healthy. And stay the fuck away from me. Good night, everyone. Right. And happy birthday, Skylar! Oh, you got it. Oh, wait, where's the oh, reaction? Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Oh, shit. That's cute. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>